I'm going to re-rig this line. I'm going to take you through from the very first step to the last step about how I rig. Okay, I'm using this braided line and what I'll do is I'm going to double it. I don't know, that's maybe a foot, eight inches, ten inches, something like that. I'm going to double it back and then I'm going to tie a five times through overhand knot. So I've made that loop and with the end of this double line I'm going through it five times. Now there's other other knots you can tie like this to get double line, a spider's hitch or a bimini twist. This is the easiest that I know of. It's just a five times through overhand knot and it will absolutely hold. I use this for tarpon. So I pull that through and there it is and all I do is hold both strands on each side of the knot and you just pull it down nice and tight. And look at that nice little pretty knot. It won't slip, slide through the guides easily. Now on this tag end I'll tug on it a little bit and then I'll get down here in the loop and I'll tug on it a little bit and now that loop is there man. That is a perfect loop and I'm going to tie my leader to that loop. First thing I'll do is cut off this tag end of the knot. I like to cut it close. And there it is. There's not going to be a lot of fray around that knot and I got a nice little six inch piece of double line, double braided line. I'm going to tie on about three feet of this fluorocarbon. I'm pull it out and I know from my breastbone out to my arm is about three feet and then I'm going to clip it off. This this Ohiro leader spool has a really neat piece of velcro on it that can come on and off but you just tighten it down like that and it'll pull pull you can pull your leader line out and it won't jump off the spool or get tangled or anything else like that and then when the when the spool's empty you can use that piece of velcro for something else. So I've got about three feet Now I'm going to tie the no-name knot or the Yucatan knot or the Bristol knot. It's, there's a lot of different names for it, but the no-name knot is a popular name. And I'm going to leave out about three or four inches of mono. I'm going to place it right at the knot of the double line. I'll place it right over the, the double line just like that. I'm not through it. I'm over the top of it. And I'm going to slide my fingers down to the very end, leaving a little bit of the knot exposed right there. Now the reason I slid it down like that is I tightened both strands of the knot. I want it to be tight. I don't want one strand to be a different length than the other. With this tag end of the mono, and I'm using 30, I'm going to wrap it back six times around the double line. Starting like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. If you're using 20 pound, you probably want to go about eight times. Now I've got six times around the double line and I'm going right back through my loop that I left on the end of the double line just like that. Now see I'm back through that loop. Now I'm going to grab my tag in. I'm going to start to tighten this down. Can you see the knot starting to form right there? And there it is. It's starting to form, starting to, it's going to pull down, it's going to cinch down on top of each other. It's 30 sometimes a little brittle, so I'm, I'm going to pinch it a little bit to squeeze it down like that. And then I'm going to moisten it. And then I'm going to, I'm going to start to pull it down tight. And when you get ready to pull it, you want to pull it. There it is. I'm pulling tight, tight as I can. Look at that knot. That's a beautiful, smooth knot. I'm going to cut that tag end off and it, that thing will fly through your guides. So I'm going to cut that tag end off pretty, pretty tight. I don't want any little piece that could hang up on the guides. Look at that knot. That is a smooth looking knot. Actually, I could trim that tag end down a little more. And then I'll come down to this end and I'll tie my hook on. I'm going to use a 2 aught circle hook. We're going to use that because we feel the size of that hook will let the bait swim naturally and the bite of the hook is big enough to stick in some of these big redfish and big snook. 
here's the loop knot that I tie, very easy loop knot. Pull out about four or five inches, maybe six inches, and then make an overhand knot. Just a simple overhand granny knot. Just like that. Now I'll run the hook through, run the model through the eye of the hook, like this. And now I'm coming right back through that loop. I'm coming right there with the tag end. So you see what we have so far? We have that. I'm going to tighten it up a little bit, tighten up the, the knot, and then slide it down right on top of the hook. I'm going to take this tag end and I'm going to tie, I'm going to turn my hands, because I can only do it right hand. <laughs> I'm going to tie another overhand knot, another granny knot, but I'm going around the main line. I don't know if you can see this. I'll tighten it down and show it to you. There it is. So what I've got is I've got two knots. And when I pull them, I'm going to moisten it. When I pull them, they're going to jam up against each other. See them start to jam right there. And then when I pull it tight, look what happens. It's a beautiful little knot, small. I'm going to tighten the tag in too, and it gives you a nice a, a loop knot for your hook to, sw to swing around on. And you can adjust the size of the loop by how much you tighten it down and the space you put between the two knots. That's a homerode loop knot. It's also called a jam knot, and that's a loop knot that I use. It works very good. Be sure to keep up with the latest news, pics, reports, and videos on all your favorite social networks.